sucks to suck. You know what else sucks? Probably this video. I don't actually know what its contents are because I haven't watched it. It's called the top 12 biggest lies told to white people. Hmm. Well, I'm a white person. Let's see if uh, let's see if I can pick out any of these lies, huh? So, to those of you who don't know, maybe you've just stumbled across this two B video when I make it one. Um, maybe you've heard of Red Eyes TV. Maybe you haven't. They're a Nazi rag. It's it's a Nazi thing. That's what they do. Um, except problem is, in polite society, you can't actually run up and down saying you're a Nazi. You have to dog whistle, which means you have to signal those beliefs in a way which uh, lends some plausible deniability. So I'll tell you what, we'll play a little game, okay? I've watched their videos before. I've seen the pro-white, anti-black, anti-brown, Jewish question, hinting sort of stuff. Let's play a little game together, okay? We're going to watch this video, and um, if if I uh, if I see any like Nazi dog whistle, I'll go beep, 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 beep. It'll be my little dog whistle alarm, okay? We're going to do it, you and me together. It's going to be fun, okay? Propaganda. What is it? Information used to influence an audience to further an agenda, to sell an idea, material used to propagate the faith in a specific doctrine, like the religion of so far, progress. So oh, it's a set nope, of techniques wait, beep, that are beep. often associated with influencing a target audience to buy into a social or political ideology. The techniques are biased and meant to appeal to emotion. In our age, there is no such thing as keeping out of politics. I agree with Every that. tiny little thing is now a political issue. Why are her eyebrows like that? Are they lopsided? Anyway, um, yeah, everything has been political basically forever. Okay, that's a pretty hot meme. You know, um, every aspect of life under a society like, say, Nazi Germany is re regimented in accordance with that society. Same with us here in America, um, though there are different levels of coercion involved everything is political yeah that's a pretty that's a pretty uncontroversial take uh whatever the case is little weird what was that um the dogma of progress that's like strange i mean if you think about it basically everything is propaganda you know um but some types of propaganda are pretty good i guess like for example when i'm reading in the history books and it says and then they freed the slaves that was probably a good thing i can read that and think that is propaganda but I'm okay with it, you know? Let's see. And every day you are blasted with propaganda to convince you that these things are true. And although there will be propaganda on both sides of the issue, both can't be true. One is false. Okay, so this is a false dichotomy. If two people are trying to convince you of something, both of them can be false. That is absolutely the case. There can also be truth to different perspectives. That was just a really stupid thing she said. Uh, so here's what we're going to go into here. Like, here's what she's going to do. She is about to present us lies told to white people. And I bet you, I bet you, they're going to be super misleading and designed to appeal to the sensibilities of people, white people, who feel that they are being victimized by hordes of brown and black people. Uh, that through immigration or through uh, destruction of their culture, brown and black people are ruining things white people have. I bet you anything, these uh, lies told to white people are actually little tiny nuggets of propaganda cleverly delivered in a listicle format designed to reinforce the preconceptions of people who are scared of non-white people. Just a thought. I could be wrong. Let's give it a shot. Who knows? Simply put, propaganda is the battle for your mind. Whether you're conscious of it or not, you are inundated with it every day. In education, in the news, in art, and Why'd especially like in that? entertainment. In fact, we should just call it entrainment. Now that we got that out of the way, one side is trying to sell you a scam. Here are the top 10, give or take a few, lies and propaganda. Whoa, top 10. It says top 12 up here. Ooh, coming in hot with the dishonesty. Of our current anti-white age. Oh, ah, yeah, let's, let's see if we can find some. Oh, hi, oh. 
all white people are racist and only white people can be racist. In fact, you are all white supremacists and don't even realize it. Your very existence, your breathing, literally pollutes non-white spaces. White privilege what? is real. Let me do a few somersaults to prove it to you. White people invented slavery and are only prosperous- Is this one point? Was that- Oh, I think that was just one point. She just kind of jumped right over it. Yeah, let's go over it one at a time, okay? Only white people can be racist. And all white people are racist. Nope. It really depends on where you draw the line at racism. If you feel that everyone is affected by the subconscious biases that they're sort of born into, every, then everyone is racist. Because everyone is born into a society that sort of subtly, subtly or unsubtly, maybe if you watch Red Ice TV, inclines you towards having, uh, you know, um, varied perceptions of people of different races. So if you subscribe to that interpretation of everyone is racist, then yeah, everyone is racist. It's not just all white people. Black folk can be racist too. Um, the difference when people say only white people can be racist, what they mean and often very clumsily try to say is that in America, at least, when white people are racist, it feeds into structural racism. That means that a broader sort of uh, systemic um, framework of racism is reinforced by their racism. So for example, if a white person thinks all black people are like subhuman monkeys for, you know, and that white person could conceivably become a cop or be a judge or even be on a jury panel or honestly just give testimony in a case or, or just work at a business or hire people or anything. And that bias can affect how they treat people of color. Whereas if a black person holds those biases, they can affect white people with it, but it is much less likely that their biases will serve to reinforce any systemic discrimination because we don't really see a pattern of businesses, courthouses, poli police officers, the justice system um, discriminating against white people. It's not so much that one is like worse than the other in terms of how bad the person is. It's that one has the potential to have worse consequences than the other. And only white people can be racist. In fact, you are all. It should be noted, by the way, that a sneaky trick of propagandists is to sell you the idea that everyone believes something by throwing one column article in front of you. That's a yes. I brought offering. What did you offer? Some. Okay. She made taquitos, but I'm not hungry. Taquitos. Yet another way in which the Zog menace is uh, subverting white culture. All right. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Sneaky deaky trick of propagandists is to sell you the idea that uh, uh, everyone is believing something that you need to be afraid of when all they provide to source their argument is uh, one column article from 2016. See that? October 2nd, 2016. I think you'd have some data on this, like 87% uh, of Americans think that only white people are racist and that all white people are racist. But no, the one editorial seems to be enough. White supremacists and don't even realize it. Your very existence, your breathing, literally pollutes. See, she's using really heavy emotive language here. This just seems to be an article on how uh, air pollution emitted by white people is disproportionate and air pollution consumed by non-white people is disproportionate. That makes sense to me. Um, white people tend to be wealthier. Makes sense that they would pollute more in terms of like cars or the disposal or whatever. And... Um, uh, uh, brown and black people um, tend to be concentrated into urban areas, which means they're more likely to breathe it. That makes perfect sense to me. That's like that. That makes all the sense in the world. Now, what she's trying to do here is sell you the idea that it that like a uh, uh, an elite organization of like media. Um, like propagandists are trying to force you into feeling guilty for being white. When all these are, are two disconnected articles written three years apart from one another on the opinion pieces. One of them, a very niche opinion uh, that the body of the article was not provided for. So who the fuck knows what its actual contents were. And one of them, a simple analysis of how there's a disproportionate representation of pollution, consumption, and emission between the races. Kind of little, little, kind of weird to frame this as all white people are racist, and this is a lie told to white people. But all right, I'm sure it feels good uh, to believe that way if you sort of like uh, got a victim complex kind of mentality. Non-white spaces, white privilege is real.
Oh, we're on to the next point. White privilege is real. Okay, I love these because I got stats to back this up. Let me do a few somersaults to prove it to you. White people invented slavery and are only prosperous today all across the world because of 400,000 African slaves in America. Okay, so a couple points here. I guess the white people have white privilege point we just sort of skipped over. No one believes white people invented slavery. Most college students think America invented slavery, Professor Fines. So this one professor, that's it? Hold on. Mm, the college fix. Original, student reported, your daily dose of right-minded news and commentary from across the nation. Damn. Oh, we've also got from the National Review. Hmm. Interesting. That's kind of weird. That's a little that's a little bit of a propagandistic thing for you to say. Um, for for you to take uh one study apparently done by one professor that only gets picked up by right-wing news sources from 2016 and try to make that evidence of everyone's beliefs. Hey, listen, let me tell you, American education system's trash, okay? I'm not going to defend that shit. There are kids who think America invented slavery. You should probably fix that up, okay? Um, but uh, th this trying to pose that like the war that this is a lie sold to white people, ooh, a little bit of a propagandistic trick, my friend. I would ooh, I would be careful with that one, scary vampire white lady. And what was that about four hundred thousand slaves? Today, all across the world, because of four hundred thousand African slaves in America, hundred. Uh. About 10.5 million slaves arrived in the Americas, and that's just who landed. And then they had kids. Uh, that's a little weird. Red Ice TV, I don't know where you're getting your sources from. But uh, a little bit weird, you know, maybe a little bit, a uh, little bit, a uh, little bit of bias, maybe. Um. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Wait, even this is wrong. They are convinced slavery was an American problem that more or less ended with the Civil War and are very fuzzy about the history of slavery prior to the colonial era. Their entire education about slavery was confined to the U.S. Uh, that's not the same as saying kids believed slavery be was invented by the United States. Damn! That's incredible! So not only is Red Ice TV using a single article of one professor doing one study of methodology unknown for their professors that was only picked up by right-leaning news sources three years ago, they still misrepresent the contents of that. Damn! Ooh! Wow, very propagandistic. Why are you so obsessed with lying about the number of slaves in America and lying about the results of already biased um, studies? Red Ice TV. Very fascinating. Ooh. Oy vey. Hundreds of years ago. Even places like Sweden who had no slaves. So today you must what? be very, very guilty. Hang I have never heard anyone say that slavery was responsible for building sla uh, Sweden. I don't know where that's coming from. Didn't even throw a news article up to uh, support that claim. And now she's going to do the thing where she pretends that everyone's forcing white people to be guilty. Hey, I'm a white person. I literally do like race politics as my fucking job. I don't feel guilty at all. No one's ever told me to feel guilty for being white. This has never happened once in my life. I went to like a libcucky school with a libcucky university, libcucky professors, and had libcucky friends. And I have never been told to be ashamed for being white.
No slaves. So today you must be very, very guilty. Hang your head in shame and pay. Sweden was a slave trading country until 1847. So much of its wealth is built upon the backs of the slave trade. Europeans. Lol, no. Wait, that's not much of a counter argument. Wait. Sweden slavery. The Swedish slave trade. Oh, wait. So there was a slave trade in Sweden. Okay, well, Red Ice TV said lol no, so that was probably enough to substantively debunk any claims that slavery built Sweden or that their wealth is in some way dependent on the existence of slavery. A little bit weird, you know, countries would spend literal centuries relying on slave labor for base infrastructural needs. I, there's probably no way their existing wealth is in any way, shape, or form dependent on that legacy. Let's do it more. So, so far, Red Ice TV has like, just 100% lied about everything they've done. You're getting sloppy, Red Ice. The last propaganda Nazi video I watched from you was much more convincing than this. Stole the land. All of it. Everywhere they live. They stole everything. They raped and pillaged everyone when no one else was. So why, why, who's saying that? Who the fuck is saying that? Stole all indigenous land? Raped everyone when no one else was? Who the fuck is saying that? You inventing positions to be angry about because you're reinforcing the worldview of people who have no idea how the fuck any of this took place and just want to feel secure in their victimhood? So get out of the way and let everybody else rape and pillage you. It's only fair. You're when the f- I have never heard anyone saying Americans should be raped and pillaged. Damn, what is this victim complex? This is like really fucking sad. This would be- guys, fuck 12 lies they tell black people. Um, yeah guys, um, they just say like whatever. They say black people killed, nu nuked Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So now all black, now they say all black people, you have to lick shoes. When you see shoes by a white or Japanese person on the street, you have to lick them as compensation for your crimes. That's what, th that's what they say. What like, I like, this is, this is like fucking ludicrous. This is really bad propaganda. Red Ice TV, aren't you funneled money from other places? You have pretty high production value. I thought you could muster a little bit more than this. If I can literally just Google, like, the name of the article you cite, and it's and the contents of the article disprove what you say, and even if they didn't, it still wouldn't prove your point? That's pretty fun. Whew. That's a little embarrassing, but that's okay. Listen, I understand. Propagandizing is hard. It's pretty difficult to get away with regurgitating Nazi talking points without getting demonetized by YouTube. Europeans don't have a culture. Absolutely nothing. Whoa. Whoa. The article there says, what is white culture? Not European culture. Whoa there, buddy. I've never heard anyone say there's no such thing as European culture. I know there's Polish culture and German culture and Irish culture and Spanish culture, Italian culture, English culture, Welsh culture, Scottish culture, Swiss culture, Norwegian culture. There are lots of really cool cultures in Europe. I don't know why you're conflating white and European, considering there have been non-white people in Europe for thousands of years that have had a pretty substantive impact on their culture. That's a little bit weird. I don't know. I don't think there is a such thing as white culture, because I don't think there's a such thing as culture born by race. It seems to be more of a locality, nationality thing. The only culture they do have is stolen from the vibrant peoples of other countries. When white people... I don't think anyone said that. That was kind of weird. They, you didn't even cite an article to prove your point there. You, li you literally just like straw man directly at the camera. That's okay. You're trying your best. We'll talk about heritage. It's code for white supremacy and the oppression of others. Because European heritage in itself is a social construct. Whoa, you did it again. What European heritage, white heritage? Whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Hold up there. What the fuck is white heritage? I don't know what the fuck that means. Have you heard people joking about Americans being mutts? Like, I have white heritage. What the fuck does that mean? Do you think Germany and Norway have the same fucking heritage and culture and history? No, of course not. What What is this conflating European and white? Whoa, whoa, buddies, c calm down there. I know that it's a common... Uh, <clears throat> Nazi talking point that all of Europe is white and all European culture is white culture and that there's a pan-European identity that transcends everything but race but here in 
here in reality space, um, actually, um, we recognize that cultures, nationality thing, you know, country you're born in, area, sort of like food and stuff. I don't really think it's a race thing. I'm white. I'm about as white as people in Norway, you know, more or less. I don't know. I don't have any fucking Norwegian heritage, even though I'm white and they're white. That's kind of fucking weird. I have Polish heritage, actually. There are old VHS tapes I can dig up of my great uncle uh, going to a polka dance wedding. You know, it was really weird. There, The walls were white and red like polka dots, and they were all doing that spin dancey thing. And there was some awful blaring Polish music in the background. And it was really grainy footage. And they were all doing a little spin dance. I've never met any of the people like from that side of my family, but that's about as close as I get to my European heritage. It doesn't. It's not really because I'm white. In fact, I think those people were browner than I am. Or maybe the video footage was just grainy. Who the fuck knows? And racist. But you must honor all other people's heritage, but not too much because cultural appropriation is also racist. Oh, and honoring your ancestors is not okay for you, bigot. Shame. 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 I think this is a good frame to pause it on. I've never heard anyone saying this. You can celebrate your heritage all you want. A little bit weird when you talk about white heritage, considering that means literally nothing and is kind of a dog whistle for Nazis. You all know. Hey, like if you're watching this from YouTube, like you know this is Nazi stuff, right? Like these are some of the most ludicrous dog whistles and attempts at straw manning this idea, this imagined like a conspiracy to destroy whiteness I've ever seen. If you don't think so, you know... We're only three minutes in. Oh, and then they, they have to throw the several year old memes here because they're trying to appeal to fucking Zoomers with their Nazi propaganda. It's a weird mixture of high production value and weird, like, boomer memes, you know? Because they're trying to throw in the respectability, but they're also trying to rope in the, the, the sort of interest and clicks of younger people who are too stupid to realize they're being fed, like, really blatant, stupid propaganda. When there are too many white people in the same area, like a country where they are the ethnic majority, like Estonia, it is 1933 Germany all over again. And I don't have to remind you about you that now, do I? White? Wait, that was it? Wait, that was it? There's one article from 2018 that says there were too many... Here, let's take a look, actually. So here's the one article. This is the single point of evidence that this vampire bitch cites as an argument, people say that there are too many white people, which I've never heard in my life. I've never heard people say there are too many white people. I've heard it's like fucked up that some countries have uh, ethnically exclusive immigration policies that are deliberately designed to exclude brown people and that there's effective apartheid in some communities, meaning that black and brown people are treated as second class citizens. That's a problem, but I've never really looked at an area and gone, too many white people. Disgusting. I don't know. Maybe you're ashamed of your heritage. Let's take a look at this. Too many happy white people, Hungarian city. Ah, from Russia. <laughs> ah, from our good old friends at RT. From 2018. A Hungarian city's bid to become the EU's next capital of culture was allegedly rejected because its video entry showed too many smiling, dancing white Christians. Shit. Oh, boy. Hungary's ninth largest city submitted a video short as part of its entry into the 2023 European capitals of culture. See, yeah. Hey, if white culture was a thing, I'd be able to pronounce that. Um, felt it had too many happy white people, not enough migrants. The city's mayor, Dr. Andres Sier Paldkovics, has claimed. So the mayor's bid got rejected into this, like, culture contest. And he's saying it's because there were too many happy white people. But there's no information whatsoever no information whatsoever on the actual intentions of the EU. It's literally just one allegation from one human being that they were rejected for that reason with no evidence given. Damn! Red Ice TV, what's up? You'd think that if there was so much evidence of people claiming there are too many white people, you'd be able to find some of that shit. Ah... <sighs>
Maybe you've got sources down in the description that further substantiate your points. Let's see, we've got your social media, your uh, mailing address, thanks for your donations, Bitcoin address, donations, show us some love, sign up for membership, get our t-shirts. Darn. M maybe they were left on the cutting room floor. 33 Germany all over again, and I don't have to remind you about that now, do I? White people becoming a minority in their country through open borders of tolerance is a very, very good thing to celebrate. Whites will, will not be the majority. I mean, it's an exciting transformation of the country. It's an exciting evolution and progress of our country. White supremacists, white nationalists, that is viewed as a horrific event. When the majority... Mm, yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Why the fuck do you care? I don't, I don't care about race. Why the... Wait. They, see, this is another thing that they do. They assume that you care. I'm asking you, why do you care? This is the sort of thing you would only really care about if you think that being white or being in the presence of white people is inherently better than being brown or being in the presence of brown people. It's a little bit weird. I really don't care what ethnic makeup this country is. I care about things like, you know, the economy, democracy, level of education, student debt, you know, real problems that affect real people in meaningful ways that can be addressed. Not some vague I notion that white people are being... This is literally the great replacement theory, you know. Lauren Southern, another neo-Nazi, was the one who put this forward. The idea that... Um, uh, brown and black people through like open borders and uh, mass immigration are being brought into majority white countries to sort of ethnically replace the white people. They call it white genocide. It's a Nazi talking point. What they don't often talk about is that many of them believe it is the Jews who are orchestrating this through Jewish control of the media and politicians. Um, they bring about these policies and um, normalize interracial relationships by showing black ladies kissing pretty white ladies uh, or, or black dudes fucking pretty white ladies ladies in the ass on your porn or, you know, the stereotype of Jewish pornographers normalizing interracial relationships is literally decades old. So we're treading really close to, we're, we're moving away from Nazi dog whistling to just Nazi talking points. And if you're a Nazi, like, Hey, more power to you. Thank you for being honest with yourself. Um, but, uh, I'm not, and I bet a lot of the people who might be convinced by this horseshit attempt at propagandizing aren't either. So, here we are. The majority of European nations are inhabited by the third world. Oh, no one said third world. I don't know why we keep talking, like throwing out other terms here. I'm telling you, there are a lot of brown people in the US. They're first world brown people, my friend. So a lot of brown people in the Europe, first world brown people. It's another really weird conflation that I'm... A propagandist might do, where you constantly conflate terms in an attempt to sort of uh, uh, facilitate an emotional reaction. So rather than the actual statement, which is people are free to move across borders and live wherever they like, we live in a free society, maybe more brown people will live here, okay. Uh, that gets replaced with the, w the white countries, the European majority is getting displaced by an invasion of third world. See to elicit an emotional reaction from you. The same thing she criticized in the beginning of this video. All your best dreams will come true. We'll be colonizing Mars and robots will- I don't think anyone said that that will make all dreams come true. Do all the work we don't want to do so we can enjoy a life of leisure. I know the first generation- what, what was- wait, what was that? It was just- it was just an article about like so there won't be racism and sexism in the future. It's just a random article from a science blog in 2015. What, what does this have to do? What, what, what does this have to do with the point? We'll do all the work we don't want to do so we can enjoy a life of leisure. I know the first generation might be a little bumpy, but... Oh, hold on. The second one will adjust. Actually, first-generation immigrants in America commit disproportionately less crime than 
the domestic population. Did you know that? Even illegal immigrants, when brown people come into the country, even when they're illegal, when they, uh, uh, when they, you know, uh, use their, um, uh, their, their wetback tunneling strength to burrow into the ground and pop up directly underneath uh, uh, an American welfare line, um, even then, uh, they actually commit quite a bit less crime than native Americans. That's kind of interesting. Actually, second and third generation immigrants commit slightly more crime until eventually they catch up to the norm because they're <laughs> because they're assimilating. This is the case all across the place, you know? Muslims in America commit less crime proportionately. It's wild. So all this weird fear-mongering about um a- a- about like brown people coming in um to like, I don't know, are they talking about Europe? In Norway, both first and second generation immigrants commit more crime than the average population, even when accounting for age, gender, and economic status. I'm a Norwegian Vosh. Um, we can take a look at that. In Nor oh wait, in Norway? Oh, I don't give a fuck about Norway. This uh this these two articles right here, this is from the Peter Bergson, CNN National Security Analyst. This is America. And this is about 9-11. This is America. These are both American citations right here. Uh, Europe has a different set of problems to deal with when it comes to immigration than America does, because a lot of the immigrants in Europe come as migrants, and migrants bring with them a, a, a very different set of problems than immigrants do. These are very different groups of people. Um, now, white nationalists will conflate all of them. They're just scary brown people. But in reality, there is a... Um, uh, he's talking about Bergson Vosch. It's a Norwegian city. Here, hold on. Because 9-11 was carried out by 1904 and Donald Trump is now president, 9-11, 9-11. This is, this isn't Sweden. Not, I mean, Norway. This has nothing to do with Norway. Who is in chat? Spau, I'm coming for you. This is, yeah, this is America. Europe has a, why don't you take off the ad blocker because they ask you to? Who knows? Shut the fuck up about the ad blocker shit. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, Bergen is the writer. Wow, no shit. Damn. I'm a, listen, I'm an Amerifat. I don't give a fuck about other countries, okay? America is a is a beautiful island swimming on a sea of immigrants, okay? Don't worry, Shbao, I love you. Whatever the case is, if we want to talk about like the issues with immigration uh, and migrant crime in um in uh, uh Europe, then that is an entirely different issue. But these right here, these are American citations. And in America, immigrants commit disproportionately less crime. So this whole, the first generation's pretty rough thing, I don't know about that, actually. No, I mean, the third one will adjust. It's a sacrifice. Most of the individuals committing terrorist attacks in Europe were, bo were born in Europe or a second or third generation immigrants. This is Europe. Why did she jump from Europe to America? Damn, constantly conflating two massively different regions of the world with very different issues? Whew, that's strange. I'd think that someone who was anti-propagandistic would be interested in presenting the facts in a clear, uh, cohesive way that meaningfully um, explains and does not conflate terms with very, very different consequences. Most of the individuals committing terrorist attacks in Europe were born in Europe or a second or third generation immigrants. Wait a second. That's a point in my favor. Most of the people committing terror attacks in Europe were born in Europe or a second or third generation immigrants, meaning they're not first generation immigrants. <laughs> Everything here is stupid. What? She's wrong on America, and this supports my point. As they integrate, they commit more terrorist attacks. What? what? <laughs> well, okay. So, yeah. So, another way of phrasing this is... Immigrants, first-generation immigrants, are less likely to commit terror attacks than other groups. What, what the fuck? A third-generation immigrant is basically native. You wouldn't believe that if you're a Nazi, because if you're brown, you're always not a native or whatever. If you're third-generation, your fucking parents grew up there. Your family's been there for 60 or 70 years, maybe. Okay. 
I don't even fucking know how long my family... My family's lived in California for like 25 years, and we're California natives. I, well, I, everyone treats us that way, at least. I, I'm pretty sure that if we committed a terror attack in some weird uh, state descriptive news society, they would refer to us as Californians, not fucking third-generation Alabaman descendants, but I don't know. Yeah, Donald Trump is second generation. Melania Trump is first generation. What the fuck is this? It's a transition we must make to save the world and to fight fascism. Don't have to- mm, I mean, I just like people being able to move wherever they want because I like freedom and human happiness, but that's okay. It seems to me like all of the issues caused by immigration are basically made up by propagandists like this dumb bitch right here, you know? So I don't really know- uh, so I don't really know what the issue is. Guys, I talk to a lot of Nazis. Every single time I talk with them on this, they break apart. It, this happened recently in my Discord AMA. They were like, uh, immigrants crime, commit crime. And they like backed off all those points immediately when they realized that I like understood these issues. Also, it's funny, she, um, this is another way propagandists act. They delegitimize, they reduce to absurdity the idea of people calling them what they are. So, so earlier she put the Anderson Cooper clip out, white nationalists, white supremacists, and she was just like, you want to fight the fascists, don't you? When she is a fascist, a white nationalist, and a white supremacist. So, so, you know, a little propagandistic there. Children for the environment and to end racism, white people. Mix what? Don't have children for the environment and to end racism? Mixed race children what? will bring peace on earth. A Wait, none of the articles she just cited there had anything to do with telling white people to stop having children. Just that if you want to fight climate change, you should have fewer kids, which is true. Even didn't, aren't there people literally talking about providing aid to other countries in terms of um, uh, providing aid for abortion so brown people have fewer babies? Don't black people in America disproportionately have a massive number of abortions? What the fuck is this dumb bitch talking about? Nothing that she's saying here supports the argument that people are saying white people need to have less babies. These children will bring peace on earth. And what is this article? I'm not racist, my kids, grandkids are biracial? This seems like a headline making fun of people who say they're not racist because their kids are bi biracial. This is literally a non sequitur. This article has nothing to do with the straw man she's putting out here. Damn, this is some lazy fucking propaganda. Hey, Red Ice TV, you want to debate sometime? I remember the first video I made, one of your commentators put a uh, Facebook article, uh, a, a Facebook post, Twitter post, and YouTube post, all uh, encouraging people to brigade the video I made on you. And then it ended up getting to be one of my most popular videos. Um, and I made a ton of money off of it. You want to debate? I forget what your name. You're the husband of this dumb white bitch. You want to debate? I'll debate her, too. I don't give a fuck. I smack down bitches, too. Um, sometime, I know you're going to know about this. Maybe you won't link to it again on Twitter and Facebook because of all the attention you gave me and how fucking embarrassing it ended up for you. Remember when you made those posts and then everyone was like, dude, you're getting blown the fuck out and you didn't do it again and you just sort of quietly slipped away because once you're outside of your echo chamber, you have fucking nothing? Ah, just... Ooh... You hate to see it happen. Anyway, I know that Nazi propagandistics are fucking cowards and have no interest in defending their views in live debate because it would be impossible for you to do so well, um, while, without like dropping the use of dog whistles. But I'm just letting you know, if you ever want to get your ass slapped by a pure white Nordic stock European, then I, I encourage you, okay? Hit me the fuck up. I've got an email you can hit me up at. I've got discords. I've got Twitter. It'd be really, really, really fun for me. A room full of white people, even if from different countries, speaking different languages, living in different cultures, can never, ever, ever be diverse. No one has ever said that. Usually when people... And without accepting racial, cultural, and sexual diversity, you white people will literally die. What the fuck is she even talking about? The future of America's baby boomers depends on our diverse youth. Yeah, that means that our diverse youth are the people who are going to be paying into the social security system. What the fuck does that mean? Listen to this emotional fucking whinging, and everyone's telling you that if there's aren't if there, you're not in a room with a brown person at all points in time, you're a racist. That's what they're telling you. 
white people, we can't keep doing this. They keep telling us that if we don't accept all of the racial and sexual diversity and degeneracy taking place amongst our youth, that you're going to literally die. They can't, they can't keep getting away with it. Like, this is the most pathetic fucking whinging I have ever seen from a propagandist. It's fucking wild to me. The points she's making aren't even, like, in the same ballpark of the random articles she's throwing in front of your face. From different dates and times, different articles that have, like, nothing to do with what she's saying. Damn, it's really fucking sad, because if I was a Nazi, I would be smart enough to make better propaganda than this. Or maybe not. Every Nazi I've ever argued with has been pretty dumb. Maybe this is just what convinces them. Maybe this is what you need. It's like when you're making a kid's show. If you want the kid to appeal to it, you can't go ahead and making some, like, uh, some, you know, Citizen Kane interwoven, like, complex, nuanced masterpiece. You have to, you know, make it simple and easy to understand so the kids can... So the kids can... Yes! No! Yes! So the kids can, you know, follow along. Um, maybe that's kind of like what this is, you know? They're just, you just understand your demographic. But that's also a good thing for ethnically European peoples, because you see the end of you. No one said the end of ethnically European people. They said white people. Why do you keep conflating those terms? That's so strange. There are non-white Europeans. Um, why the end of white men is actually good for white men. So when she says the end of white men, she means the death and destruction of all white people. But I bet you this article means something different. See, I'm a sociology student, and I also have an IQ point score above 30. So what I think this 2012 Jezebel op-ed is actually about, rather than the destruction of white men, it's probably actually about the... Um, the societal framework that elevates white men, um, or probably has something to do with the way in which we categorize gender or race. So let's see. White men still dominate, blah, blah, blah. Day after the election, I tweeted, I was glad that middle-aged, middle-class white men like me no longer have sole control of the levers of power. Hey, if you're a fan of democracy like I am, that's a good thing. Not all people in America are middle-aged, middle-class white men, you know? It's good that they don't have sole control of the levers of power. A friend in my same demographic shot back grimly that, after all, we are the cause of all that is wrong and soulless in the world, or so the narrative goes. Ha! Huh. That's just like this Red Ice TV video. You sarcastically suggesting that people are saying you're everything is wrong with the world. So instead of mourning, it's time for middle class white dudes to look on the bright side. We'll probably live longer. We can stop the unhelpful whining about our white guilt. Damn, don't you want that? Wait, Red Ice TV, I thought you liked white people. Don't you want white people to live longer? This is literally just how white people no longer having sole control of the country will lead to an increase in like the standards of living for everyone because democracy will now be fairer. That's a super easy to defend point. But uh, that's not how you want to present the contents of these articles to your uh, audience, is it? You want to present it as though somebody is advocating for the destruction of white men rather than a more demographically representative democracy. Is good for you. There is no war on just white- Just skipping right over that point. No explanation, just gotta throw out the headlines with no context. People, no one's replacing you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ooh, this is really good. Here's the Nazi one. Here's really good. Good for you. There is no war on white people. No one's replacing you. No one's targeting you or discriminating against you. That's impossible anyway. You don't even exist. That's not what the UN meant by population replacement in European nations, or what the mainstream media means when they say things like, white men are bad, even a six-year-old tells me so. If you think otherwise, we will ban, censor, ruin you, and get you blacklisted from society and put you on a terrorist list. Yeah, so this so this is the um this is literally the great replacement theory that she's saying right there. So it's she's saying that there is a war against white people to try and ethnically replace them um by having them like fuck brown black people or having them immigrate into their countries. Let's go over all the articles and points she makes and point out how they're incredibly misleading and thrown at you deliberately and um dishonestly. Good for you. 
There is no war on white people. No one's replacing you. Nobody is replacing you. The act of replacement is a deliberate effort. If white people become less of a population majority or become demographically less represented in a country, that is not the same as a war or a deliberate replacement. That is a product of the fact that white people are just in a global sense, not a majority, and that as world becomes freer and our immigration laws become freer, more people are going to be able to travel more freely across countries. It might lead to more race intermingling. That's not a problem unless you're a white nationalist, which if you are, you know, Godspeed. But that's not a war. I'm terribly sorry. That's not how words work. You, SJW. Definitions have meaning. No one's targeting you or discriminating against you. So what was that? People. No one's replacing you. No one's the last days of a white world. We are near a global watershed, a time when white people will not be in the majority in the developed world. What does this have to do with a war? It just means that there are going to be more brown and black people in in developed world? I don't have a problem with this. Now, mind you, I would have a problem if there was a deliberate effort from a group of uh inter from a from a group of transnational elites deliberately trying to destroy white people. Um uh, uh, as like revenge for, um, you know, uh, their victimization in the past, uh, that would be the Jewish question, which is sort of the, the, um, the essence, the nugget of Nazi ideology. But you don't believe in that, do you? Red Ice TV? You don't have any weird feelings about Jews, do you? Let's uh, finish this point. Targeting you or discriminating against you. That's impossible anyway. You don't even exist. White Britons will be a minority before 2070. Okay. I, again, all these points only make sense if you think that like the natural ways in which people move in a free world means there's a war against white people. You know, when a black person and a white person fuck and produce mixed kids, those kids are every bit as much white as they are black. This is the language of white supremacy. The idea that whiteness is something delicate and precious that has to be cherished and protected, where all the other races are just these, uh, these brutish, uh, 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 natural sort of uh, emergencies or, or natural sort of invocations of, um, of, of, of some primal force in humanity that don't need to be defended or protected because they'll infect everything around them. So when a white and a black person fuck, that's not uh, to, something new being made. That's blackness overcoming whiteness. I don't know why you have such a low opinion of your white genes. If I had kids with a black person, I'd consider them half white as much as half black, but Again, all these points only fit together if you already believe the lie that um, there's a deliberate effort being made to harm white people by ethnically replacing them. Exist. That's not what the UN meant by population replacement in European nations. Replacement migration. Now, to my memory, replacement migration refers to when the um, domestic birth rate of a nation is um, low. It's below replacement, so lower than like 2.1 or whatever. So that is shored up by immigration from other countries. This has been the case in America for quite a time, I think. I'm pretty sure the domestic birth rate... Um... What's the Okay, that's the total number of babies. I'm looking at the birth rate. The replacement fertility rate is 2.1. By 2018, it's 1.72. Okay, so there you go. 1.72 is the uh is the current American birth rate and the fertility rate you need to maintain replacement is 2.1. So what the UN means here by replacement migration is when immigrants come in to shore up that um, deficiency. This has nothing to do with white or brown people. It's replacement migration when a pearly white Irish family moves over to America and helps us sort of stipend our... Um, uh, uh, low domestic uh, birth rate. A little weird to sort of throw race in there. I don't know what that has to do with this point. I guess it all fits together if you believe there's a uh, 
international group of bankers and financial elites trying to destroy whiteness by bringing brown people in from the third world to replace us. But as we've established, there's no evidence that uh, Red Ice TV is weird about Jewish people. So I should probably stop bringing that up. Or what the mainstream media means when they say things like, white men are bad, even a six-year-old tells me so. Yeah, again, just throwing up a single article with that headline, trying to prove the, trying to prove the international destruction of a group of people with an op-ed's headline. <sighs> See, I'm kind of a facts and data guy. If you want to talk about the destruction of the white race, you're going to have to come at me with some pretty hard-hitting data. But I know that the fucking Neanderthals who consume this propaganda and think it's making good points uh, <laughs> um, can't read. If you think otherwise, we will ban, censor, ruin you, and get you blacklisted from society and put you on a terrorist list. Um, you will get put on a terrorist list if you threaten to commit a terrorist act, which a lot of you white nationalists do. Um, I'm totally okay with banning Nazis from spreading Nazi propaganda on YouTube, right? I'm okay with that bit in the TOS. There's a bit in the TOS where it says no hateful conduct and Nazis, you know, Nazis. So I'm, you know, I'm okay. But as we've established, Red Ice TV, probably not Nazis. No evidence that they're weird um, about Jewish people. And oh my, oh how no. could I forget the most important thing of all? Oh, geez. Israel is our greatest ally. Oy vey. Of course they need a really, really big wall to keep undesirables out. To keep Israel, Israel, you anti-Semite. I've seen this one before on Nazi subreddits. So this one's super easy for me to answer. Hey, if you're just tuning in, my name is Vosh. I was permanently banned off of Twitch for criticizing Israel and saying that America should bomb it into oblivion. Do you know why I said those things? Because I'm a leftist and I don't like Israel because I don't like it when ethno states build walls to keep undesirables out. Join me. Together we can make a difference. Turns out the response to uh, ethno nationalists wanting to wall off America so only white people can live there, um, the response there isn't, um, well, Israel does it too. It should actually be. It's bad when you do it and when Israel does it. Get, see, do you get that? I have, uh, I have uh, masterfully woven past your talking point there by being against fascist ethno states when they're Jewish, too. The Jewish people are the chosen people by God, and they have the highest IQ on the planet. This is some, this is, this is literally the Jewish question. So they know what's best for us Europeans. <laughs> lots and lots and lots and lots of immigration, you fascist. Oh boy. And that's the video. Damn. Wow. They really, really, really have to. Yeah, dude. Not a Nazi channel. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to see here. Just literally the Jewish question. Damn. Guys, I'm not a Nazi. I just make video after video after video reinforcing the idea that whites are under attack um, from ever from the media and that uh, the, cho the, the chosen people have our best e European interests in mind. Isn't that right, Goyam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Also, wasn't that only 10 reasons? Wait, does she talk more after this? I'm... Um, like, just because they don't agree, they fear what happens when people and laugh in the face of those who tell you otherwise. Your mind is not. 
arm yourself with the truth and let all right we don't need to listen to this arm yourself with the truth yeah this is this is like really bad hey listen listen even if you're a neo-nazi hey have a little bit of self-respect why don't you consume like actual information to help you reinforce your points rather than incredibly easily disprovable lies from propagandists like for example i'm a leftist i'm like an anarchist you know like i'm really i'm pretty far left you know here's this is my left. That's your right. Here's my left. Okay. I'm over here. You know, I'm, I'm out of there. You know, um, I'm out of there. I'm way over there. Okay. Um, but when I like to consume information that makes me feel good about my worldview, worldview, I usually like uh, read studies or I consume the writings of philosophers and economics or economists, or I engage with other people's discussions. I don't usually sit down and listen to like weird, highly edited propaganda pieces that like a literal 14 year old could disprove if they had an eighth grade's understanding eighth graders understanding of like history uh that's a little bit that's a little bit strange to me is it because you're like like retarded like maybe you can't like follow i don't know it's a little strange but i believe in you you know i really do i'm rooting for you red ice tv thinks you're dumb they do they think you're stupid that's why they make the video like this. Um, but I think you're better than that. I think you're smarter than that. So, you know, I'm just saying, any you Nazi fucks want to debate me in the future, I better hear better arguments than want to get out of videos like this. Another myth, diversity is our strength. 100% Western European and so very proud. At this point, I've been pushed so far that if I get called a white supremacist or a Nazi, I just say, yes, I am. Well, race mixing is not evolution. 100% European and proud. My wife is 100% European. Can you imagine being so sad that this is your life? You have so little going on in your life that this is it. This, this is all you have. You just watch videos that like convince you that you're the victim in some international conspiracy to victimize you for your race. And then you post in the comments about how proud you are to be white. Like, even if you take away all the Nazi shit, it's just kind of sad. You are not a POC. We need more colorful than the people of poop color. <laughs> Always remember this. Our supremacy is based on our competence. Hmm. Why isn't this played on telly? Oh yeah, they own it all. The little... Ah... <sighs> 